Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm going to do another landscape in pastel, this time a beach, a seascape with some crashing waves. Let's have a look. So I'm going to use this light blue pencil to draw the line of the horizon first. And also maybe make some quick indications where some of the rocks will be. After that I'm going to put down some white pastel pencil. By the way I'm using Kohinoor pastel pencils and I'm working on a UART 800 paper. After the white pencil I'm going to put a couple of blues. First some of this light halo blue and then maybe a little bit of ultramarine. I'm going to play around with these blue colors a little bit to see if I can get the color that I want. I put the white first because I want the sky to appear lighter because I'm going to be blending all of it in. I just need to make sure that I have enough material on there before I start blending. I'm going, to, I'm going to blend that with my finger. <clears throat> so the scene is going to be uh, divided roughly into three parts actually. The sky, then the rocks and the sea and then there's a little bit of the beach in the foreground. The top part is very simple, just a plain sky. I'm not going to draw in clouds. Now I'm going to divide the rest of the scene by drawing the line of this foamy water where the splashing waves are. And then I'm going to make some indications where some of the rocks will be. So I'm basically using the same materials that I used in the previous video where I drew uh, greenscape or riverscape. <coughs> that was a completely different scene but with the same materials, with the same materials. Now I'm starting to work on the sea. And I started out with this uh, light blue color, this light or a middle feel of blue, I don't really know how to describe it. I, I kind of have a limited range of colors with these Kohinoor pastel pencils, because those are the ones that I have. Anyway, I put down a little bit of grey on top of that because I thought that the colour was maybe a little bit too vibrant. And I'm also going to add a touch of green. So because I can't really uh, find the exact colour that I want, I'm going to try to play around a little bit with a couple of different colours. I need to clean up the line of the water, the line of the horizon, so that it looks more or less straight and level. It's not going to be perfect because this is all freehand but I'm going to try to make it look as good as possible. After that, as you can see, I'm blending again with my finger. <coughs> this is a form of sandpaper, I guess, this UART sanded paper, but it's gentler on your hands than regular sandpaper. Still, you know, when you blend enough with just one finger, your skin will get thinner. I uh, didn't have any darker blues in the Kohinoor range, so I picked up one of the Master Touch the, uh, woodless pastel pencils. I put down a little bit of that darker blue here at the, at the top on the very horizon. So I think the color is a little bit better now, a little bit closer to what I wanted. I'm going to start working on these rocks. Now for the rocks, <coughs> I want... Now I'm not just going to use the background color of the paper, which I think is a little bit too light. I'm going to allow some of it to break through, but for the most part I, I want to add some other colors, at least, especially on this rock here, which is all the way to the left, and which is a little bit further than the other rocks. So I added some brownish and reddish stones and a touch of grey. And after that I'm going to work uh, with a black pastel pencil. 
With a black pastel pencil, I'm going to make some indications of smaller shapes and shadow areas. And I'm going to give it some texture so that I can imitate the appearance of a rough, uh, rocky surface. And while you're doing this, uh, going back and forth with some lighter and darker pencils, um, the idea is to produce a texture that kind of looks like uh, rocks or a bunch of rocks. So it has to be very rough. And uh, in some places I will simply add some more of the black pastel because those are the shadow areas, like for example here on the right side and at the bottom. Those will be the parts of the rock which are getting less light or which are facing away from the light source. A little more shadow here at the bottom. And because the rock is a darker shape, it, it'll stand out nicely against the, against the river, uh, against the sea, rather. All right, um, so I drew a smaller rock on the left in the foreground, so I'm gonna move on to the, to the other rocks here. There will be a larger group of rocks here, like five or six of them maybe. And these are a little bit closer to our viewpoint. So first I'm making some indications of, of the general shape and the shadow areas in between the individual shapes of rocks. <clears throat> By putting down a little bit more of that black pastel here and there. And that way we're getting some idea about the overall shape of those rocks. Now the water here is getting a little bit more grayish in color. So it's a good thing that I have this light pool gray color, light pool gray pastel pencil. I'm going to add a little bit of that first here <clears throat> around the rocks because we're getting closer to that part of the water which is uh, washing up on the shore so it's going to be wavy, splashy, foamy and I'm going to need to work with a wet pastel pencil but before I can do that I need to put down at least some of these darker colors first I'm going to put some more of the green here I want to make the water a little bit more greenish here on the left and a little bit darker I'm going to allow my finger to pick up a little bit of that black pastel dust and push it in so that I can create some darker areas where, the, where those splashy white uh, shapes will stand out even better. The water is a little bit darker in some places around that rock, maybe because of the shadow, maybe because of, uh, it's semi-transparent destroying a few more of these smaller shapes and now I'm starting to work on the foamy water with a white pastel pencil I'm putting down some white color around the rocks because that's where we're going to have the most of that splashing water now in addition to these Kohinoor pastel pencils I'm also going to use the Kohinoor white charcoal pencil which I feel like it's a little bit more opaque, a little bit whiter than the Corginor white pastel pencil. I don't really know uh, the exact composition of them, but I feel like the white charcoal pencil is a little bit whiter. First, I need to do a little bit more work on this part of the water here in the middle. I'm going to add some indications of waves, and uh, I need to add some shapes of darker value, so I simply use the black pastel pencil because when you look at waves they're kind of like small hills and valleys in the water and uh, I'm gonna use those uh, darker shapes to indicate that this is a part of the water which is raised above the rest of the water there's gonna be a little bit of shadow here on this uh, vertical side of it 
and then at the very top or the crest of the wave there's going to be some foamy and splashing water I'll get to that in a minute just a little bit more of this uh, cool grey here at the bottom where the water is spilling all over on the on the beach on the sand and the colors are already starting to look more natural they're starting to look a lot better but once I start really start adding the splashing water uh, that's what's going to make the scene look uh, a lot more convincing first I'm going to start with some splashing water around this uh, rock to the left and on the crest of these waves which I just drew so at the very top I'm just adding some indications of splashing water and you, you can see how much more convincing this is starting to look I'm also going to add some indications of some lighter ripples in the water behind these waves these don't have to be particularly light or particularly conspicuous and you don't have to try to draw every single shape <clears throat> by the way the reference is going to be attached in the description as usual now here around this rock on the left we have some um, waves which are spilling over and crashing against the shore so I want to capture that movement of the water and a little bit more green because it looks like the water is a bit more greenish and a bit darker here in this area so very nice smooth transitions from bluish to grayish and greenish tones this is very easy to do with pastels and uh, like I said I'm working with this uh, Kohinoor white charcoal pencil which is very similar to the uh, white pastel pencil they feel more or less the same it's just that this one is a bit brighter I think it's a bit more opaque so just adding some more of that splashing water and now there's a rather smaller rock here in front of that one on the left just adding a little bit of shadow under it adding a bit more value and texture to it so that it stands out against the against the rest of that water <clears throat> and now we have some more of those splashing waves in the middle especially around those larger and taller rocks I want to make it look like um, that Fungi water is kind of being tossed all around the place, all over the place. And that's why I want to vary the angle and the direction of these tiny droplets of water. Now with these droplets of water, you don't want to try to draw every single one of them. Just a few of them will do. So just a few of them here and there. Just some suggestions will do the trick. Most of the time I'm just sort of dragging my pencil, imitating the movement of the splashing water. And the reason why I picked this white charcoal pencil was that uh, because it's a little bit more opaque and a little bit more white, there is less mudding and the marks that I'm making are a bit more distinct. So if I were to do this uh, with a regular you know, white pastel pencil, I think there would be a little bit more mudding and maybe I wouldn't achieve such clean marks or as much contrast as I have. I'm moving on to these rocks now. So if you have, I don't really know which pastel pencils you're using, but it's good to try out a couple of different brands. Maybe you'll find some advantages and disadvantages in them, and you may want to kind of use the advantages of um, all of the types or brands of pencils that you have. So I added some yellowish and ochreish tones to some of these rocks. These will be a little bit lighter and also a little bit larger, more massive, but mostly because they're closer to our viewpoint. I'm doing a bit of blending, but um, when, once I start adding those um, indications of smaller shapes with a black pastel pencil, I'm not going to want to blend too much because if I blend I'm going to I'm going to lose that wonderful texture that really looks like 
tiny rocks, tiny irregularities, tiny cracks in the shape of the rocks and um, you can't really produce that effect uh, by trying to draw every single tiny shape deliberately but when you just drag a pencil you allow the pencil to work for you and you allow it to produce these uh, irregular rough looking textures that kind of look like rocks and that's why it's important to allow the pencil to work for you not only because it's because you're lazy and because it's faster but because sometimes it just looks better when you draw in such a spontaneous manner rather than trying to define every single shape deliberately and this is a part of the process where I just sort of look at the general shape of those rocks and I stop worrying about the details in the reference because um, if I try to replicate every single detail in the, in the reference it would be very time consuming and I don't even know if it would look that good. This way with just a little bit of work on that texture, just a little bit of dragging the pencil around like this I can create some indications of a rocky shape with a lot of cracks and irregular little shapes. I'm going to draw some smaller rocks which are jutting out to the water here. Maybe they aren't completely concealed by those splashing waves. And I'm going to start working on these, uh, on these uh, somewhat larger rocks in the middle. But once I finish this uh, middle part of the scene, the the foreground area at the bottom is going to be a lot simpler with just a few details because it's mostly going to be a sandy beach. So this scene is kind of interesting because um, it's a pretty much a classic composition consisting of three segments of three parts of more or less the same height. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing is that the top part and the bottom part are very simple very little detail as you will see and then in the middle we have all this stuff going on uh, all the sea and the splashing waves and the rocks so I think this is um, both makes it easier for me uh, but it, it's also advantageous in terms of the composition because it allows the viewer to focus on that middle strip of the scene where we have all of these objects and contrast and textures. So the sand is going to be a little bit darker just under those rocks because it's a wet sand and uh, to the left it's going to be more grayish because there's like a thin layer of, of water on that wet sand which is reflecting the color of the sky above. Um, as for the rest of the scene at the bottom, I'm just going to use the color of the paper. By the way, this UART sanded paper comes in two colors as far as I know, uh, dark and light. The dark one is very close to black, kind of matte, but uh, the other, um, this lighter one is uh, kind of like a very light sand color. I added a little bit of shadow to that rock. Uh, or rather on the ground this this tiny rock is casting a little bit of shadow on the ground and I feel like this is a very nice uh, touch which adds a lot to the realism. I'm just adding some details to the foreground now adding some smaller uh, rocks, pebbles uh, on that sandy beach so that it doesn't look too simple or too monotonous. I also added some indications of um, I also added some indications of waves uh, on the on that wet part of the beach and I also made some parts of the sand a little bit lighter because it's wet and it's reflecting a little bit of those lighter values from above. Now all I have to do is finish these rocks and the scene will more or less be finished. I'm just going to add a little bit more of those reddish and ochre tones to, the, to, to these rocks here so that um, I have a little bit more variation in color. Uh, I don't want just that color of the paper. But you can see that I'm not covering all of those uh, areas. Um, 
uh, with color I'm allowing some of those uh, smaller bits of the background that light background color of the paper to break through because that's allowing me to create that interesting texture I don't want to blend all of it in I just like to cover it partially because um, that way I leave a lot of those small and predictable lighter details which uh, create an illusion of very irregular looking shapes. Um, so here and there I also used the kneaded eraser to lift up a little bit of color and now I'm just putting my signature in the lower right corner. I'm going to finish the scene by adding a little bit more of the splashing water around the rocks here uh, to the right and also on the left maybe uh, because that will increase the contrast between that uh, foamy water and the sea and, uh, and, the, and the darker shapes of the rocks. Just a little bit more of that splashing water. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Uh, subscribe or give me a like and comment to let me know what you think. But if you want to see much longer videos and uh, full-length videos with a longer narration and more explanations of the technique and the materials, you should check out my Patreon because you'll find a lot more content there. Anyway, the drawing is now finished. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye for now.